Okay, um, we're going to break down some organs today, guys. I decided to pull out three bags, trash bags is what they look like when I keep my organs. It's all my vacuum sealer stuff. I have a million bags for all sizes. Those are like testicle size bags. <laughs> um, but they're pretty big bags, you can see that we're full. Um, they're still, I left the beef tallow. Um, because we're not going to render that right now, but you know, there's your bag of beef tallow from one cow. A steer actually, not a cow, but okay. So <clears throat> we're looking at a few things here. We have, it looks like one hog. Nope, two hogs. But you know what? I'm realizing I'm one ton less. I should have had two tongues. Sorry, guys. I'm just seeing what's here. I better have a tongue in another bag. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I can tell we've got two pig hearts here. I think what's happening is I'm missing some in another bag, so it's a little uneven. Two pig hearts. I think we've got two livers. Yep, there's one. There's the other down there. Here's our kidneys. We've got four of those. Um, we've got cheeks back here. Uh, these are hog cheeks, jowls. We've got one hog. Here's another over here. Um, two leaf lards. Uh, obviously, there's probably, yep, yeah. And there's probably more in another bag. Um, this is beef cheek here, two beef cheeks. Uh, we've got beef liver. Um, beef liver is pretty good size you can see I mean they, they get even bigger than this this is just a young one um, beef heart and pig heart so we can compare nice. so the pig heart is the closest to us you can see when you harvest an animal guys you're like oh yeah probably <laughs> what I got a little this is a little bigger than mine <laughs> I think mine's smaller um, the anatomy of the animal is an amazing thing um, when we get this stuff and it comes in here, my husband doesn't like doing this part. He never comes in the kitchen for this. It's amazing, the tubs he'll bring in, but he evacuates. He will eat organ meat hidden in his food, and that's it. Um, he loves meat, but boy, some people, they don't wanna see hearts and stuff. The point is, this is important food. And anybody throwing this stuff away, that's 75 pounds you just threw away of food. The amount of muscling in these cuts, which are always, and there's other cuts too, that I don't have it all here. Um, the amount of food in these cuts and tallows is just remarkable. And again, this is only part of a cow and two pigs. It's not all of it. So I was gonna originally grind it all up for you guys and show you my dog food thing, but we're always tight on time. Farming takes up so much of my time and getting other things ready with the animals and stuff that it gets really difficult to get stuff in here and do this. So I'm not going to grind. We'll do dog food another day. Um, we're just going to, I'm going to show you how I package it. And a lot of times this is just for my own use or to resale it. Um, so however it may be, and that's a hog tongue. That's a pig tongue right there. We keep all tongues. This is an incredible piece of muscle here. Um, I mean, absolutely everything you want to keep. It all matters. It all becomes food, candles, soap, um, food, fat is so important. Uh, the liver alone in itself, you guys hear the nourishment right in this area. And then you take the hearts and the cheeks and stuff. You really, 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 uh, when you're processing your animals, if you're throwing it away, don't, okay, don't. So the first thing we're gonna do uh, is the livers. All the rest is a good size, and you can usually get bags. When I do kidneys and stuff, don't get a giant bag, get smaller bags, you know, so you're not wasting all that space. And how much are you gonna eat, or are you gonna sell it to somebody? Don't put too much in the bag. So the liver is like wings, you can see. And I basically just cut the wings off. I mean, I always think that's probably a pretty good portion. Now, 
if that's too much or even you know you're cutting these chunks up for your dogs or cats and that is way too much to handle at one time cut it up more get it into a package that you're not going to waste it you're going to take out the right size portion that you need and go from there but you're not going to go oh gross now it's old in the fridge throw it out well, you package too much why'd you do that you know mm -hmm. You have a chance to break it down right now into something that's a good portion. So you already know what you're going to do with it. I'm going to cut this guy in half even. <clears throat> so I sell organ meat and um, we use it ourselves. A lot of times I don't sell it. I just grind it all up and make a big dog food, which we can get into on another video. But that takes a lot of time for me um, to run the grinder. <clears throat> I do not have a industrial grinder, as I always tease my butcher friend, because <laughs> he's like, you need a better grinder, but they are so expensive, the commercial ones. So basically, I still have a laughable little one. And that's what takes so long, is getting all of that cut up so that you can get it through the grinder chute because the grinder chute's not very big um yeah so it's kind of a pain in the booty okay this is the other pig's uh long hair oh, it's a biggie it's a biggie <laughs> i really like using the organ meats i the first time i dehydrated them because that's another thing i like to do is i don't now because the cost oh, yeah. i don't make it back but i would actually just slice up all these organ meats by hand with a good sharp knife into little tidbits that i de i i'd have so many racks of dehydrator trays and man not only did i gotta tell you i mean they're just delicious it was disgusting how much I wanted to hate the smell and everything. And you'd try a little liver chunk and go, hmm, that's kind of good. <laughs> um, so as much as we were grossed out by it, I, I kind of want to leave a big one, but then I'm like, no, that's too big. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, we've had some times, but now electricity is too expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to justify dehydrating all this for 24 hours because it it may not cost a fortune but it's costing mm -hmm. who wants to spend more um and then i was selling them and as much as i felt like i got my price plenty out of them the reality was i mean i should have added some sdg and e in there <laughs> you know because it really wasn't worth it so i stopped at that point that's when i said no more Okay, I'm going to cook the actual beef cheek tonight for dinner. So we're going to set those two aside. But the pork cheek will package and all the hearts. Um, I'm not going to render the fat today either, guys. So I'm probably just going to put that. I might render that tomorrow. I think I'm going to put all the lard back to go with the beef lard down here. And I will render them tomorrow because... Those take quite a bit of preparation, too. Let's get this out of our way. So if you've never used um, leaf lard, it's the most beautiful stuff on earth. It's so tender, soft. It has a membrane that holds it together or it wouldn't hold together. See how it crumbles? Oh, wow. This is kidney fat. Jeez. So when you open it up even, it just turns into like butter. It's so soft. Now the fat that's on the external of the hog's body or the pig's body is very hard. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's not like this. That's why this is the treasure. When people go, what is leaf lard? It's, they, 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 you know, you're thinking, it sounds like plants. <laughs> is it vegetarian? No. It, the leaf lard is just kidney fat. And... It's the sought after stuff for baking. Mm -hmm. That's what bakers want, is it? There's no scent or flavor. And I guess it's really exceptional to use some pie crust and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't do a ton of baking. And when I do pie crust, I use like 40 sticks of butter because I love butter. <laughs> so I, I probably should try it with the lard sometime. <laughs> but for now, 
I'm just going to show you how to package. And I started buying the bags later because I'm lazy now. Mm -hmm. We used to buy the roll that was like 100 feet long. And I basically seal the edge, roll it out to what I thought I needed, cut it, and seal the other end. It was really simple, cheap, but to be honest, these bags are not that much more mm -hmm. to where I started just paying the extra couple cents a bag or whatever extra. Um, I just was like, you know what? I don't want the roll anymore. I just want to grab and go. Do it however you like. The rolls are fantastic because you can save a couple dollars. Um, for beef heart, don't cut your beef heart up unless you have to. Keep that baby in one piece. Leave a little air in the bottom, guys. You, you can ram it down in there for sure. Seems to seal a little better, though, when you leave just a smidge of a gap. I have a really junky sealer here, so... Uh, you're not going to want to ask me what it is because <laughs> I literally had to get this off Amazon. It's just some like China make. But my vac sealer from Costco died and I was really vac sealing a lot at that time. So I do this with everything. You can get the spleen, the pancreas. Um, we will usually on the cow. I didn't do this time. It's a shame I didn't. Um, definitely do the stomach. A lot of time to clean it out. Well worth it. So I don't know about anybody else vacuum sealing, but a little word of the wise. If you have a juicy item, um, you're going to want to have your finger on the seal button. Because, you know, when you're vacuum sealing meat hunks, if you haven't done it, you got a lot of kind of fluid. I use other towels to pat them off generally before I put them in the bag. That's why the towels are all here. Um, but if you keep your finger on the seal button, well, you'll see fluid start sucking off the product. You can see the kind of blood there. If that gets into where it's sealing, it actually will stop the seal from working. So you don't want to see the fluid go up to that bar. So, a little tip for you guys there. Mm. Sorry guys, that's my smoothie. I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> no, actually, I can go on the other side with that. Okay, so, heart's done. Now, I'm going to double seal it. Just because I hate if the seal is not fully sealed. And on a lot of these items... My junkie sealer doesn't get it on the first go. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that looks better. I like it. I got a fly bug in me. Okay, there's our beautiful heart. Love it. I don't have to mark heart on it. I know what that is. <laughs> and I'm basically going to go through everything like this, guys. And whether you're using the bags or anything else, let me get my other bags. Um... You are going to definitely want to vacuum seal it. You can grind it and vacuum seal it in these bags. <coughs> Excuse me. You can do endless options. Um, you don't have to do the bags. If you're grinding it, you also could get the little deli containers. We do a lot of the deli containers. Just, I hate plastic. Don't get me wrong, I don't love it. It's just convenient. And how else do I freeze anything? Mm -hmm. Come up with a better idea, guys, and I'm in on it. Anyway, I'm gonna work my <laughs> excuse me. I'm gonna work my way through all of this and uh, be done probably within the hour. So you guys have this stuff in your freezer. Get it out and get to vacuum sealing.